All right, you guys uh, have done some reading in the Krugman textbook, and you guys read about the expanded circular flow diagram. We did some real basic ones back in the first quarter, but the expanded circular flow diagram is going to allow us to see a few new ideas here. Um, boy, they can get confusing. In fact, I've, I, I've never seen a textbook that does it exactly the same way. Um, the most important thing in terms of a circular flow diagram is not to memorize it, it's to understand the relationships and what's going on. Where, what are the forms of spending? How's money circulating in the economy? And that's what we're going to do here that's a little bit different than the simplified circular flow diagram. If you recall on the simplified circular flow diagram, we had households and firms. And the firms were producing goods and services, which went to the households. But then the households were giving money. So we had both the goods and services to flow as well as the money flow going in the opposite direction. That's still an important concept we want to keep in mind, but because we're going to add some new levels of complexity to this, we want to uh, just focus on the money flows here. So we're just going to have the money flow. So let's start the same way. We're going to put up here, we're going to have our households, and we'll get the firms up there, just like we've done before. And you recall that we, we kind of mixed it up. We said, hey, could be the other way. Just changes the flows, right? It was all about the relationships and the, the connections, not about memorizing one particular diagram. Now, what we know happened is that in terms of the money flow, firms were producing goods and services that would go to the households. Households were giving money to the firms. Now, that money that the firms have, where does that come from? The households have some income. And there's two things they can do with their income. They can consume or save. Now, there's a lot of times people say, oh, invest. But remember, what are the households going to do? They put it in the bank. They buy stocks. They buy bonds. And that is a form of saving. Now, some of them, if they decide to invest and actually buy physical capital, what they just did is they just became a firm. Okay? So that'll help you keep that straight. So households, some of the money goes over here to the firms, and that's the money they spend buying consumption goods and services. So we'll put here consumption. That's this flow. Boom. We've got consumption spending. We'll put an arrow along the way because we're going to add a few things as we go to this whole flow. But that's the first stream. Now, we said they would consume or save, so bam, here goes the savings. And where do savings go? The banks, stock market, bond market any of the financial intermediaries or markets. So I'm just going to put up here, we're going to go financial markets. So households go to the financial markets. They put their savings in over there. And then the financial markets, whether it be the stock market, the bond market, whether it be the banks, they take that money and they're going to lend it out. They're going to lend that money out to the firms, and we're not going to connect that over to the firms. It gets pretty sophisticated if we do that. The picture gets a little messy. But let's bring that flow in here. The savings that goes out gets converted into investment. So we get some investment spending. Now, there, be, there may be some blocks to the kind of linkages that would make that happen. In fact, we talked about those when we are talking about economic growth and the financial markets and loanable funds market. Why? that savings might not become investment. And those are the kind of links that we want to make sure are working. So that money is invested. Physical capital is purchased. Now, what else do we got in the economy? We're going to add one more thing here. We've got households and firms. This is just private. We've got to bring in the public sector. Remember, we talked about that when we were talking about the loanable funds market. We bring in the government. So one of the things we have here, the government, and if we wanted to be sophisticated, we'd probably have some attachment here to financial markets because there's some of that money they're going to be borrowing. But that money that they spend on goods and services, that's our government expenditures. Government spending. Now some of that, I'm not going to draw that, but like we said, they might borrow for some of that. Some of that comes from tax money. We'll see where taxes come in in just a second. So we've got households that are paying for consumption, some consumption spending. 
Investment spending coming into the flow. These are the purchases of domestically produced, going to the domestic firms. Purchase of domestic goods and services, those by the government. But sometimes the households, the businesses, the government, they buy goods that weren't produced here in the U.S. They were produced somewhere else in the rest of the world. So we got the rest of the world over here. Now, we'll remember, we're talking about the money flows, right? That means that money that goes out to the rest of the world is being paid for the imports that we're buying. The goods and services are coming in. So we're going to have a flow that goes out, and that's our imports. That's the import spending. But the rest of the world's going to buy some of our goods and services. And so we get some money coming back into this flow. And the money that they give to our domestic firms is the money earned from exports, goods and services going to them, but the money flow coming in to these domestic firms.